Hello everybody, what's up? This is Mario Ibarra Jr. here with 3 Shibuya TV and we're here with the master letter man here in Los Angeles, Mr. Eric Create Walker and we're talking to him today about his collaboration with 3 Shibuya. I grew up in the generation, I, come, I was born in the 70s but I'm a product of the 80s. That being said, my parents that I grew up around always focused on having style. Yes. So when you looking at what Three Shibuya is doing, it's all about style. Yes. Fashion. When you see my artwork, it's all about style, yeah. technique, yes. skills. Yes. So both of those two go hand in hand. They work powerful together. Yeah. And so that's why I felt that it would be a, a good thing for us to connect the dots. Yeah. And when you connect the dots, it make a whole big picture, which is this right here. Big ups to you, Create. You've been around for a long time. But, you know, you've decided to collaborate uh, on this special edition t-shirt with 3 Shibuya, partner up with them. And we've been able to produce, you know, with you this beautiful t-shirt. And, like, looks straight lifted from one of your black books. Yes. Like, I, I can see the design marker drips. You know, I don't know if, I, I know you were high with all those marker fumes <laughs> when you were drawing that, that picture. So can you break down some of the imagery and what's going on in your uh, t-shirt design? This concept right here that uh, we put onto the shirt actually comes from a major concept which is at the Getty Museum. Okay. And the Getty Museum has a uh, project that's in their private collection called the uh, Black Book of Friends. Nice. And it's where 150 uh, LA graffiti artists came together uh, and submitted marker drawings and pen and inks and whatever inside of books mm -hmm. to show people what it's like to have a sketchbook with full of artwork. This design comes from a concept that I put out called um, the Defender of Style series. And when I say Defender of Styles, you see this little character right here. It's, it's not a character of me, but it symbolizes me to a degree where he has the number eight pencil because you know most artists when they draw they start off with a pencil sketching. Yeah. You know, so I'm doing my styles, but then you got these biters, which are the snakes. Yeah, the biters trying trying, trying to take away. Like in Beach Street, like no biters. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? No biters. You know what I'm saying? So by doing this, he's defending my style, he's making for sure none of these snakes and people that's trying to get it take away from it. You know, I'm walking down the alley and there's all these beautiful pieces, yeah. but on all of them. Their thank you, create. Thank you, create. Like I've read, yeah. thank you, create. Oh, yeah. Just as many times as I've read their crews, read yeah. their tags. Like, thank you, create. Thank you, create. You know, and three Shibuya. You know, myself included. I feel like I'm part of the team here. Oh, yeah. We want to say that too, man. Thank you, create. Thank you for collaborating with us, man. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you, George. Like, you know, he's been one of my mentees since he was a oh, teenager yeah. wow. in my garage. You know, and now he's doing this this wonderful thing, and he's going after the people like yourself that are setting the standard like i have a scheme shirt on man yeah. like that's fire man like and so risha Buya is i feel in good partnership with you in terms of setting the standard brother right. and one thing i want to say to include with that you made a good point there's a lot of companies and a lot of other people see as an independent artist sometimes people don't open up the playing field on an equal basis for people to get a piece of the pie. Gotcha. There's a big pie, which is the world 360 degrees where everybody could get a slice and get full off of it and we could all be satisfied. But when, when the pie is being sliced not properly, yeah. it, it does a disservice to the masses of the people to give diverse. It's like the rap business, you know, you hear all so much flooded with foolishness on the radio, yes. but then you don't hear the other stuff. Yeah. So yeah. It, when, when you see that kind of artwork out there as well, yeah. you see one style of art and it's flooded and everybody be looking like, damn, is that it? Yeah, it's but played, it's played. It's played out, <laughs> but, but, but when we come with that secret ingredient yeah. and with that recipe that they yeah. never tasted, yeah, yeah. then we feeding it to them, then they like, well, damn, where, where did that come from? Yeah. And man, it came out the vault. Man, we had that hidden in the secret treasure, man. Yeah. And so we pulling it out because <laughs> we want people to get a dose we want people to get full off some stuff, but we got more coming out the oven because we want to feed you more style. Yeah, that's, that's true, what it's man. all about. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay, man, so like, when people are going out for a job, they make their resume. And on their resume, it has like the companies they work for. Um, 
if you're a sports player, you know, you got your jersey from Lakers, whatever, at Dodgers. Today I'm wearing my filas. Just have a, a George reminded me, finest, finest in LA, right? You bigged up me on my filas. Acronyms, man. In graffiti, your crew is like playing for that team. And, you know, this piece is wonderful. And we talked about all the tech, tech, technicalities of all of it. But, man, you got on both ends kind of bookmarking this piece. Say LA, of course, Los Angeles. But then you got RTN. WCA, TMT, and L2S. Like, that's like saying you're playing for World Series Yankees, or, you know, World Series, Do Series Dollar, Dodgers, you know, champion. You got rings, brother, you got rings, man. We should be having a parade for you on all this. So can, can you explain to us what those acronyms mean and why I'm so, I'm so hyped on like, create, team create teams you played for, crews that you've been involved in, why those are so relevant and what makes that in the littlest letters that are on this wall such a heavy significance. So yeah, um, as far as my crew's history, I'm president of my crew which is called Rockin' the Nation because I'm one of the original members since day one. And uh, you know, Rockin' the Nation is very important because of our legacy of being from South Central. We hold the keys to the history of a lot of stuff that took place in South Central in terms of a lot of historical stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so, especially myself, I've been around for so long to where I know about certain key things and, uh, of the history. Gotcha. As far as uh, West Coast Artists, West Coast Artists is one of the crews that I'm part of as well. And West Coast Artists, when I was a youngster, like 13 years old, man, like they set the, the standards in the bar way back then to where the quality made you want to reach high, it made you want to strive for something. And it was a pleasure and an honor when I was able to be a part of West Coast Artists. As a young kid, you know, just looking at the walls and trying to be like, damn, man, I want my level to reach this level. They were your heroes. Yeah, they was like heroes, superheroes. And then yeah. when your superheroes look at you, and see your potential and say, come on. And that's when you feel special to carry that torch and keep running. Yeah. Now, the other crew, Last to Survive, L2S, that's another crew because same thing, same time as West Coast Artists, that was another force to be reckoned with was because Last to Survive was like Mid-City and the South LA type crew mm -hmm. to where, you know, they had a particular thumbprint signature style that was different from all the other parts of the city yeah. that, that carried a lot of weight, mm -hmm. that actually inspired a lot of people. We all was bouncing off of one, in the, uh, one, one another, yeah. learning from what we was producing out there at the yeah, time, yeah. taking photos and soaking it all yeah, in. Yeah. Uh, we were creating the culture. Yeah, we was creating the culture and everybody was absorbing like a sponge and being trendsetters. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, learning how to take other people's stuff and flip it to another level. Uh, now, as far as TMT, uh, the magnificent team, the mighty team, you know, that's a crew that I got into in 2011. Now, how did I get into uh, a East Coast New York crew? Yeah. Well, I was up in Oakland at a crew, uh, at a crew, at a show called Aerosol. Much shout out to Aerosol. And uh, while I was there, I got a chance to meet Chain 3, K, Team, and uh, a couple of other people. And what ended up happening was they was like, Chain 3, he was watching me paint and he had a smirk on his face. Ah. And he was looking like, he said, hey, man, come here for a minute. And he walked me over to the president of TNT and he said, man, you got some skills, man. Like I'm digging your style. And then also they heard me do a lecture at oh, San yeah. Francisco State University. Yeah, and that was so. Yeah, that, that was amazing. Now yeah. when he took me to Cade and Team, he said, I want this young brother right here to be down with the West Coast chapter of TMT. He was like, man, what y'all think? Is he is he qualified? They said, hell yeah. yeah. He, he qualified, man, put him down. Yes. They were like, from this day forth, man, you West Coast TMT. I and see. so I carried the torch and it's a good connection because in, in our history, a lot of people think New York and LA got some type of Me. clash, you yeah. know, and that's stupid yeah. because truth be told, you know, that is the mecca of style of where we was influenced from when we saw a new form of letter style that we didn't have out here in LA. Yes, yes. Now we do have our origins of what we've created. Of course. Which nobody can deny, but at the, the essence of it means a lot. Yes. You know, to be able to be in a crew 
where the pioneers built the blueprint to certain flavors and signature thumbprints of style. When uh, people like Chain 3 and uh, Scheme and them was telling me about different elements of what we use in our pieces that most people are unfamiliar with. Mm. Once they broke that down to me, what that did was allow me to be able to have a clearer understanding of the purpose and the reason for what I do. Roots. Uh, yeah, the roots. roots. Yeah, a lot of times people just paint, they don't have no clue what they're doing. So there's no kind of real attachment. There's no spiritual attachment to the art form. But now with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding about what we're doing, it takes me to a whole different plateau of how I come, uh, come into it and how I represent it to the fullest in this proper form and format in life. And, but at the same time, using this third eye of wisdom to push it to a whole different level with the foundation of the blueprint on my side. <laughs> Thanks, Craig, man. Thank you, Craig. Thanks for having us, homie. Like, was, it, was that deep? Nah, right you there? broke it down, dog. Nah, you broke it you know down. Like, like, listen, like, listen. Like, master words from the King Create. I don't know. Mic drop, dog. Mic drop. Like, like, Pete Gang. <laughs>